Greetings family and welcome once again to Ask Us Anything episode 6. Remember the rules are simple. Like your question, get others to like your question so that your question moves to the top. We answer the questions that have, that have got the most likes first from the top down and because we only have a limited amount of time, if you want, if you want your questions answered, please like and share, comment, and also don't forget to subscribe to OSM Vision so that we can keep the content coming. All right, let's get straight into the questions for this week. Okay, um, the first question is David Devian Rudri. I'm not going to try and pronounce people's names because I always get caught up. <laughs> What really happened on January the 5th, 2024 at the Bayside Mall in Miami, Florida, USA? Was it true about extraterrestrials appearing out of nowhere or was it a hoax? Simple answer is I don't know. Um, I know we know a lot of information, but we don't claim to know anything. And to be honest, certain things, unless the master teacher, Pana Babianun, has spoken on it. I won't know it to be factual. Um, there may be other people who have some information, but I personally don't know if it was real or a hoax. However, we do know, like we've explained many times, there are many, many extraterrestrials on the planet and portholes are being opened, vortexes are opening, um, CERN doing the experiments, they're opening, you know, wormholes, portals, etc. So, we're living in a day and time where, to be honest, anything is possible. And you also have the other side where people are hoaxing things and just messing with people's minds. And, you know, some people just fake things. So I don't know about that particular incident. Well, at least not yet. Um, and, and until I get any information on that, I won't be speculating. All right. Um, question two. The Vatican came out this week and addressed apparitions and supernatural phenomenon. What some of your first thoughts when hearing that? It's my understanding they haven't spoken, addressed the topic in decades. Um, we've always spoken about, you know, apparitions and we've explained about disembodied souls and ghosts and we have um, Parteraks and scrolls that cover the subject. You know, we have a Parterac called Ghost, the Ghost. Um, we have, you know, 30 spirits, um, you know, we've explained many times that there are many disembodied souls uh, or spirits, shall I say. Um, so them speaking about it, it's not really that much of a surprise to us because we've been speaking about it for a very long time by way of the master teacher, Pana Babianun. So um, in a way, it's good because they just confirm everything that he has said over the years. Um, Next question. Greetings, peace and love, brothers and sisters. When you transition from this physical body to the next realm, what are the different paths for the soul? Is it an immediate judgment? If so, by who? Does the soul linger in the next realm or is it immediately reincarnated? Thank you for your works. Um, yeah, I, I've also explained this many times as well. Um, your, your body, the kind of like your physical body decomposes and goes back to the, to the elements, to the ground. The soul and spirit travel on. And this is why it's important to have a strong essence in terms of your, your soul, because the spirit and the soul will travel together and then they will decouple. And if you have enough life force, the soul will carry on. Um, in terms of what you're asking about, you know, do you reincarnate? It's, it's like it all depends whether or not um, you've made it or you, you raise yourself to a certain level to propel to the next, you know, the next realms. Um, we always give you the realms from the physical realm to the, you know, to the spiritual realm, to the soul realm, to the mental realm, all the way because you have nine ether everything is composed of ether as you know so uh, as an etheric being the stronger you are eth etherically the more likely you are to go and also depends on whether you've accomplished 
your purpose of why you came here. Um, and if you have, then you won't need to come back. If you haven't uh, and you see the white light, you're just going back through a wormhole to come back. Um, and so in terms of does it linger um, in the next realm, you do get, if you're not coming back, you get 60 days where you can then um, travel and visit you know, loved ones and families and things like that. They won't be able to see you, or some people may be able to see you if they've got a very high spiritual um, connection or if they're, if they're raised spiritually, but others can feel your presence or can feel you, um, and then you, know, then you would move on to the higher realms. So it all, de it all depends on the situation and the person. Um, what did the master teacher say is the real name of the creator of all? Um, well, th this question of the creator keeps coming, coming back again and again. The, the creator, you have the creator and you have the creators, right? And there are creators on different levels. And this is why we have to explain it so that people who may be caught up in the religious mindset, they have been taught, taught that the creator is this one being that did everything in, say, six days and then rested on the seventh day by going, let there be light, let there be this, and let there be, you know, all this kind of stuff, like a magician. However, when you analyse that and scrutinise it properly, you have to first of all ask, why is it that every religion, right, every monotheistic religion, they always have some type of creation or form, right? For someone to create, if you research the word creation and creating, it's about taking something that already exists and forming it into something else. And in the scriptures, there are two words that deal with creation. So the word that most people are using when they say creation is bara, right, in Hebrew, right, bara, um, where you get the, the, the word, the original words for the chapters, like barashith, barashith, which is dealing with the recreation. So in that way, you're dealing with beings, yeah, reforming and, you know, doing what they call creation, which really means to grow. So you have to take things in existence and then form them and then they grow. However, when we talk about your creator, scientifically, we go back to your mother and your father. Yeah? They are your first creators and your mother is the nurturer. So she is the, the goddess that will, even when you're in the womb, you know, you get fed through her, through the unbiblical cord. And so um, when we're dealing with, you know, when we're dealing with that whole thing about creation, then you have to say, okay, if we go back before your mother and father and go back to the original people on the planet, which goes back to the African descendants, right? They would be the beings that came to this planet and we call them the Natharu, something Natiru, okay? And they are nature, that's what the word nature also comes from Natiru. These are what we call the original creators and the overseers. And they basically seeded this planet and then, you know, life evolved from the waters onto land and then, you know, different species evolved and so on and so forth. So the word, who is the creator, um, people are trying to find that one source. Now, what we call the best word we can use for a deity or what you're trying to call a creator is pa'ot, yeah, which is, or we say pa pa'ot, which is the all expanding. Because if you start to go back to where we started from, you may go to the birth of our universe. Although we know there are other universes and that universe will expand and contract. Yeah? So you have constant, there's duality in everything, like we breathe in and out. Um, so there's expansion and contraction. Um, I also spoke about this in terms of, you know, when you're traveling interstellar using warp speed, you know, you use contraction and expansion. So when you start to look at the creators of the universe, that goes back to elemental beings or beings that have 
basically elevate it to a point where they can basically create and come back at will, you know, from the etheric realm and, and personify and come down, slowing their vibration because you're dealing with different levels of vibration. And the higher the vibration, the less need there is for a skin suit. A skin suit is designed for hair, for the elements, for locomotion, so that you can move and talk and so on. So depending on which parts of you you're talking about in terms of creation, they originate from different sources, as in your physical body will originate from the physical elements. But your etheric body, your soul, your mental, they come from higher vibrations or higher realms. All right, I hope that answered that question. Could you touch on semen retention? One of the things um, I think we have to kind of emphasize is learning how to ask questions because sometimes people just ask a question that's just like open-ended and it's hard to kind of know what do you really want to know. But obviously, um, semen is, you're talking about energy, you're retaining a lot of energy because as a being, a female takes in and a male gives out, yeah? So if you don't give out your life source because see men the word is broken down into see and men because it ties into the fact that you're dealing with you know those little tadpoles called sperm and that's your life force and so if you and it's energy as well so if you retain it you're going to save that energy you know and then it helps you in terms of what they call raising the kundalini because when you're dealing with what people call the chakras that go up your spinal column, um, you know, like you can, we've talked about how you can use the vibration or the energy source on those um, centers. So the, the lowest chakra is the one that deals with desire and sexual kind of needs and desires. So, and this is where the sex force is utilized to control a lot of people because lust and, you know, the media and certain things, it's all about you bringing your vibration low to deal with that particular chakra yeah so yes yeah, semen retention is good but at the same time everything in life has to have a balance yeah so um, there's no extreme with Wusabat so you have to basically have a balance and you can't just retain you know semen forever so um, yeah I hope that's giving you something but don't ask um, open-ended questions because it's hard to know what, 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 what you're really trying to find out. Is the Galactical Federation a real thing? Are we being protected for real? Short answer, yes. Um, when, you think, when you say Galactical Federation, you're dealing with the galaxy, right? So just like on the planet, we have, you got, you got different sovereign states, different countries, and they're autonomous in terms of like, you know, their governments, um, prime ministers, presidents, etc. And then you have international in terms of like the United Nations where the different sovereign states come together when certain things need to be discussed or when you're dealing with incidents on an international level or conflicts. So the Galactical Federation is the same thing where you have different galaxies and if there are conflicts between different galaxies, then different representatives from the different galaxies come together and try to resolve these situations. So um, the master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malachi Z. York, has taught us and has been explaining about the Galactical Federation for a very long time. And this scroll called the Akasha Records is something that I would recommend that you get to learn more about the Galactical Federation um, and yes, they, you have movies like Guardians of the Galaxy and that ties into these beings who are the guardians of the galaxies because they have to keep order. I'm going to read you a little excerpt from this. Um, it says, uh, like, uh, I'm going to read from page 25 of this actual, f um, actual fact called series number 72, the Akasha Records. Um, it says, I have been from verse 188. I have been guided all my life by these beings who teach whatever I am asked. To make it clear, all other physical people have ancestors who speak to them all the time in their heads as far back as four 
generations. I also have a body, Malachi Z. Kobina York, also known as Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. That is my physical. That is my physical me. I am also in my etheric body, Yanun, who is the nineteenth elder, and have both Riskians and Markabians of Zeta Reticuli in Orion's belt. So I have many who have come to me over the years and have taken me to many worlds. The very first time I came in contact with the Me Stones was in 1963 AD at age 19. I was taken inside Mount Shasta. I told this story in the past of the cave. I was led into the cave in Mount Shasta and there were twists and turns. It was just a rock cave. I felt then we reach a point where there was only a great stone wall. We passed through it and there was this great hall. Once inside, I saw elevated seats that did not touch the ground. On them were beings seated, levitating. Many what you would call strange creatures, even monsters. Each group of them represented a star system or they represented star systems. I never saw anything like them before. No sound up front. It was a big screen, I mean real big, and was curved. Beneath the seat was a small slit, half dollar size. I came to know it was my own seat. It was for a disc, a personal me stone. Once I was seated, looking up front, beings from risk came on stage with other beings I did not recognize. Yet with me was this being, his name was Rama. He was humanoid, yet a golden color with silver white fur and red eyes about four feet tall. He spoke and said, just relax and smiled. Up front, they spoke to each other. Then one waved his hand towards the screen and it lit up. It was a star map of constellations I did not recognize. What they talked about, I was not knowledgeable of as it was not for me. Then he waved again after many others and I saw Sirius and Orion and I was called up as Yananan, Yanun, and given my place as the 19th elder and my assignment as the master teacher. And so much more I was shown and told. I met many star people and even some of the strange creatures each had their own signet or symbol. It seemed many knew each other. Much of what I was exposed to, I can't say here. I saw, well, it goes on, right? So that was to tie into that question about the Galactical Federation and um, the different seats or the 24 elders that meet and discuss various things. So if you want to know more about that, get hold of that scroll. And yes, they protect the planet. They protect, because as I explained on the previous video, what happens in everything's connected we're all tied together by ether yeah so everyone is connected to some level or degree and if something happens on the planet it will affect other planets and if something happens in our solar system it can have you know a devastating effect on other solar systems so it is their duty to to protect us um all right let me move on where is your friend from episode one in the bookstore? How come he doesn't come sit down and answer questions with you anymore? Um, he was away. He, just, he, he travelled to the motherland. Um, but you saw he made a, a comeback the other day when we covered uh, the Terrence um, Howard um, you know, reaction video. So he is back. He's, he's here. So we will get him on. Get him on. All right. Um, June, June 26, 2030. Can you explain what happens on that day? This is what, this is what I mean about like, a, a very open-ended question, like June 26, 2030, can you explain what happens on that day? Well, I could say the sun's going to be up. You know, I, I know, I know like, you want something for that day, and it actually is significant to us as Sabians or um, you know, Musbatu. It's our new year because we have our own calendar, right? So what people are calling 2030 is to us 6030, you see. So um, it's, it's the birthday of 
our master teacher, Pana Bab Yanun. Yeah, so he was born on June 26, 1945. Um, so that's why um, we celebrate something called the Z Festival, or Z, Z, Z Festival, or we call it Saviour's Day, um, because, you know, our, our Saviour is here. Um, and again, before people trip on that whole saviour thing, anyone who comes and saves you is, is, is a saviour, you know. So um, on that day, we do, you know, we celebrate our culture um, and, you know, we reflect and, and, you know, talk about all the positive things that Panda Bab Yanun, Dr Malachi Z York has done. Um, and yeah, it's, it's our, the beginning of our new year. So, you know, that's what happens on June 26, 2030. Um, but there's obviously a lot of other things going on in the world that could be happening at the same time. But that's what happens with us as Musbatu or Sabians, Nuwapians on June 26. Um, we used to always have a celebration on our land um, known as Tamare or Egypt of the West. But at the moment we are scattered and um, because of, you know, the injustices of them stealing our land and falsely incarcerating you know, Panda Bab Yanun, um, or shall I say, Dr. Malachi Z. York, more appropriately. Um, so we still do have celebrations wherever we are. Um, we have different communities all around the world, and we, we still celebrate it, despite the fact that we are now dispersed, all right? But we are working very hard to come together and, you know, regroup. All right, let's move on. Um, what is the spiritual significance of the planet's alignment on June 3rd. Thank you for your answering our questions. Again, that's such a very open-ended question. Um, let me say, like, how, the best way to ask a question is try and keep it straight to the point, simple, um, and, and don't kind of like ask a question, but then give statements and comments and try and answer your own question because it kind of makes it difficult to answer. Um, I'm not sure about what's going to happen on June the 3rd. Um, there's no year, so I, I presume you mean this year. But planets align all the time. And when they do, um, significant things happen in terms of the energy that is emitted or, you know, different energies that come to the planet. Because, you know, the Master explained to us, for example, when May the 5th, 2003 aligned, these, these are signs of the times. Um, there may be somebody else who's going to give more information or maybe we'll get an update from the master on that alignment. Um, but yeah, spiritual significance is energies do get um, sent down to the planet. All right. Uh, let me keep going. I have a question. Does God actually matter? Not here, not showing itself, allows everyone and everything to interfere with its supposed word zero direct contact, etc. Why is it necessary to care? All right, again, um, it depends on what your concept of God is. Um, because, you know, like religion would teach you about God. I mean, I don't know where you first came across that word God, but it's because it's in English, the first occurrence of that word is in Genesis, right? The book of Genesis in the Torah, which people call the Old Testament, or the first book known as Barashit, which people call Genesis. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's a translation. And so what is in the Hebrews, Elohim, you know, which is more than one being, describing extraterrestrial beings that people are referring to as gods, as angels, etc. So the reason... Um, when you say, does God actually matter? It's, again, that's very open-ended. Um, you are God because, you know, where does that or the origin of the word come from? The word comes from a German word, good. Yeah. Um, and it's also attributes where you get Goma, Oz and Dabar, which deals with wisdom, strength and beauty. These are attributes that can be attributed to physical beings. Um, and so it depends on what your concept or what you know or call God. Um, a God is simply someone in control in terms of controlling yourself, controlling the environment um, and controlling other people and other things. So, 
you know, you could say like, um, the presidents and prime ministers who make the decisions to affect the masses are in control of those people if they subscribe to to those laws that they that they put in place. Um, and yes, we say that because in terms of like when you say they don't show you, but in the Bible, one minute they tell you you can't see God, and in another instance they tell you that someone saw God. They say um, he's hidden. And the next minute he's not hidden. They, you know, like you saying here, like he doesn't show himself, but yet sometimes he does. Um, and if he is in control, why does he allow everyone and everything to interfere with things? Um, there's no contact, um, but yet people claim they, they speak to God and have contact. So why is it, is it necessary to care? Yes, it's necessary to care because... Um, there's order in the universe and to care is to have things in order so there won't be chaos. With chaos and no care, we will damage the water, we will damage the planet, we will damage the resources of the planet, which means that it will affect us. Like, for example, we, pour, we cut the trees and then, you know, it affects the air that we breathe because the trees and the vegetation, they give us oxygen because everything is a cycle, life's a cycle. Um, yeah, I think it was on the, um, on the Terence Howard a reaction video where we said about the, the chicken coming from the, from the dinosaur and that went crazy in the comments. And the point we were making, because people are like, okay, that means you're still saying the chicken came first. And we were saying that, because things come from things that come from things that come from things. So the point wasn't like we were saying, okay, the dinosaur is the end of it. No, the chicken came from the dinosaur, but the dinosaur came from something else and that came from something else. And when things cross over or pass, they recycle. Life is a cycle. So yeah, that's what we were, the point we were making. So yes, we, it is important to care about the water, care about the earth, care about everything that sustains us on this planet, care about do you know what I mean? The, we, we damage the water and then we put water in bottles, plastic bottles to sell it. People freeze the plastic bottles, the plastic seep into the water and they're drinking plastic and it will clog your body, it will affect you. So we do care about your nature and the planet is alive. And it's also, that's why I explained in a previous video that the word man manifestation is literally man infesting the planet by doing all the crazy stuff we do, you know, the pollution, cutting the trees, poisoning the fish and the, 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 the animals, killing and eating the animals, um, which is not really conducive for your, your well-being. So, yes, it's necessary to care. I heard it's not good to be reincarnated and we must break the cycle. Is this true? Only in the sense, as we've explained, that if you have accomplished your purpose, your goal here, if you've raised yourself spiritually, um, the whole purpose of you being here is to learn certain things and master the physical world, master the physical realm, so that you can then move on. It's like being in school and you master a subject, you know, um, say you master nursery, you move on to secondary school, you might master that and you go on to higher education and have, you know, get a degree, first degree, a bachelor's degree, then you might do a master's degree, you might go on to do a PhD. So it's all levels of learning and growth. And if you would like to continue experiencing in, you know, other realms, other dimensions and multiverses and, you know, having different experiences as a being that has elevated to that level, then yes, you, you won't come back. But if you come back, there's a reason why. Um, the reason, you know, could be that you haven't learned the lessons that you're here to learn, you still have something to accomplish um, and you still have growth in terms of, you, need, you know, you need to grow spiritually to be strong enough to propel yourself and move on to the higher realms. Um, can you go in depth about the planets and the ones we don't really know of? Again, that's such an open-ended question. Um, there are billions of planets, um, and to say go in depth, I mean, you can actually Google some of this. Obviously, at least master you the one you're on, <laughs> the planet Earth. 
um, the ecology, you know, the, the geology, the things of this planet. We need to, you know, master the planet we're in. But our solar system alone has many planets, you know, Neptune, Jupiter, Mars, etc. Learn and study those. You can actually go on Google and learn about those planets. Of course, the other planets, um, unless we've traveled there, you know, either in your, in your sleep state, um, when you leave your physical body and travel with your, you know, your spiritual or your soul or etheric being, you could visit these other realms. However, if you've never been to another planet yourself physically, then you can't really confirm that for yourself. However, because we have a being amongst us, um, Dr. Malachi Z. York, who has told us where he comes from, which is planet risk. You heard when I read it from the Akasha records, planet risk, which is in, you know, in Ilion, Ilion um, planet risk is the eighth planet on risk, which has three suns, tri-solar system. Um, we can only go by his experience and what he has told us. And you don't have to accept it because people say, oh, how can you plant? How can you prove that planet risk exists? We can't, but he can because that's where he's from and he has given so much information and detail about it. It's like if I met you on the road on, you know, in another country and you told me you came from another country, how am I going to prove or know that's true? I mean, I'm going to tell you everything about that country. Obviously, in this day and time with technology, etc., you can um, Google it because they have satellites that show you different things you can learn about. But if I, if you haven't traveled to another country, like for example, some people have never left the UK or left England or London, um, whereas other people have traveled, say, to America. And now the, the person who's never been there can only take your word for it and watch movies or listen to the TV or the news. And But for you who have been there, it's real to you. But, you know, don't believe anything... Um, you know, one of, one of the ways the master teacher teaches us to confirm things is using evidence, reason and experience. Um, you can't experience everything, and, but you can reason things up and there is enough evidence sometimes for you to be able to make up your mind. All right, so I hope that answers that question. What are your thoughts on Terence Howard's interview with Joe Rogan? I found the beginning particularly interesting when he described his first memories as falling into the womb. Is this proof of reincarnation? He later um, mentions a palace he could visit in his dreams that had sacred knowledge like the flower of life. Do you think this place is his Akashic records? Did, you, did any other parts of the interview interest you? Yeah, so as you know, we did a reaction video to him. But before that, I, I was speaking about him, um, you know, for, for months, for like even going back a, a year ago or so. Um, and why we found it interesting is because there's nothing he says that we haven't already been taught by the master teacher, Parna Babianun. And if you go back and listen to any of my TikTok videos or any of the um, OSM vision videos, even the very first one, you would hear us talking about ether. We've spoken about nine ether. We talked about so many things that he also spoke about. Um, so yeah, that, that is good. Um, in terms of the womb, yes, again, that confirms what we're talking about, that you do reincarnate. And we, the fact is that you can come back and remember. And like he was saying in his video, he was like, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. And yes, we also explain, like I said, even today, you can travel to other realms when you're um, out of your body suit or your skin suit, that the physical you, and you can travel to these different realms and, you know, have experiences and visit things. And a lot of people call it astral projection, you know. So yes, um, what else did he say? Do you think this palace... Well, I can't speculate on whether that was his Akashic records. He, he would have to answer that. You'd have to put that to him. Um, yeah, the, the entire video was very interesting because it was literally like, and when you see the, we're going to do the, the rest of it, um, the part two, look out for that. Um, 
literally everything he was saying was aligned. The only thing that I, I commented on the video was like, we don't, we're not here to judge him or judge anyone, but like the smoking part, we, we don't advocate smoking cigarettes. The same thing Einstein was doing, smoking, you know, his um, pipes and stuff. Um, but to each their own. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything he said on the video was in alignment. And I was like, I'm sure he's reading some of the master teacher's books. If he's not, let me tell you, and he says this on his video as well, which was very interesting. When you're vibrating on a particular resonance, right, in terms of frequency, anything that's vibrating on that same frequency is going to align. So, like we say, you have the mental reservoir. If you're someone who is thinking or reasoning on a higher level, right, and you're going to pull from the mental reservoir and others will tap into it as well. And you will say the same things because if you're vibrating on the same vibration, on the same frequency, you kind of receive the same outformation or, or energy, you know, because um, water will always go back to water. You know, water, water always escapes and goes back to water. Um, what do I mean by that? So if you took water, water can be in different states of vibration, as in the solid would be the ice. And then when you melt the ice, you get the liquid, which, you know, people call water. Um, and then that water, if you heat the molecules, um, the atoms will vibrate and they will turn into steam. And then the steam will evaporate and go somewhere, it goes back to the source, which is itself, which is water. And you can put water in a glass jar, tighten it, and leave it there for years, it will find its way out. It may take a very long time, but it will eventually go back to water. So um, yeah, that, that part where he said that, because he's vibrating on that resonance frequency, it's going to go out and other people that are, vi you know, when people say other people that are vibrating on the same frequency are going to, they're going to catch the same energy. You know, when people say, and they've said it with our videos, like I was just scrolling or browsing and this popped up, you know, because there's something within you or you needed that at that moment. And the universe has a way of sending that information to you, you know, so yeah, um, that was interesting. Does Wusabat have holy days, holidays they celebrate annually? If so, can you share the most important one? Well, I mentioned it just now, the most important one. Well, they're all important, but our, what we call the uh, Z Festival or Saviour's Day coming up on June the 26th, comes up every year, June 26th. It's our new year. It's um, our master teacher, Parnabab Yanun, Dr. Malakazi, York's, Earth Day, um, and we, we have holidays all throughout the year to counteract the negative ones, you know, because we, we, we've we um, explained many times that a lot of the holidays that you partake in, the rituals that go back to pagan rituals, go back to, you know, the Wiccan, uh, Wiccan religion, and so to counteract those negative energies, you know, like, for example, you have something called Halloween, and what happens on Halloween, you know, children are given candy, which is not good because it ruttons their teeth. People dress up like, you know, monsters, ghouls and vampires. And, you know, they, they, they do a lot of crazy stuff on that day. Um, and if you do some research, you find that a lot of deaths and certain things take place on that day. So we replace those with things like, uh, you know, we call it Prophets and Angels Day or the Ancient Ones Day or Children's Day in terms of counteracting what they call Christmas. We have, you know, Asset Fascia, which deals with what they call Easter and go into the, the real kind of like origins of it because when we say Ashtat, that's the same person known as Isis and that literally, the story comes from Easter. The word Easter comes from Ashtat or Esther, which relates to the person they call Easter. Um, Isis, and different, different names for the same being, you know, the same way like, you know, the, the Jesus goes back to Yahshua, which really goes back to Hara or Ha or Haru or Hiru, um, or we say, you know, um, yeah, so that's what we do. We replace them with positive ones. We have a calendar as well, which gives you all our holidays or holy days, um, pure 
you know, pure days that we deal with um, coming together. Um, does Baba ever talk about the Book of Enoch? Uh, he talked about everything in it at a certain point. I wonder, did he ever talk about the book? Yeah, he was actually the first person that I heard speak about the Book of Enoch. And this is going back many, many, many years. And he not only speaks about the Book of Enoch, but he speaks about a lot of books. Like, for example, the Sahuf, which most people probably have never heard of or don't know about. But if you're from the Islamic religion or persuasion, then you may have come across the Sahuf. Um, and if you go on YouTube, there are many videos where, you know, part and about um, Dr. Malachi Ziyok is speaking about the Sahuf. Um, the Sahuf deals with, you know, pages that were given to other prophets, um, such as, you know, you know Adam, um, you know, many, many people before, um, like you talked about Enoch, people that received Barnabas or Barnabi. That's like their books that, um, yeah, so he did speak about the book of Enoch before anybody else I know started speaking about it. So, yeah, the question is, does he ever talk about the Book of Enoch? Yes, he does. Um, yeah, I mean, that question is very, again, meant very um, open-ended. I wonder, did he ever talk about the book? Yes, he did. Um, have you heard that California, New York, Mississippi is going underwater? If yes, what do you recommend? So what I mean, like, what, what do I recommend? If, if you're there and it's going underwater, what would, do you think I would recommend? Get out. <laughs> but um, on a serious note, again, this is something that the master teacher uh, has spoken about way, way back before, way before the year 2000. He was explaining about somebody called Lori Toy who received a vision um, and she put together a map called I Am America, okay? Um, you can Google this uh, and find out the I Am America map, which showed in her vision the future when certain tsunamis and certain tornadoes and earthquakes and certain things that natural calamities were going to happen where a lot of, you know, the coast um, of America will go underwater. And a lot of islands, because if you think about being in a little island and you get a big tsunami, um, you know, a little island will get drowned. So these are things he has spoken about. Um, I'm not saying, um, but even, even England, like England sits, or London specifically, sits in a basin like that. And it's been going down and the, um, they had to build, you know, the... the um, the gates, the floodgates, you know, because it's gradually sinking. Um, and he, you know, part of um, the America, I Am America map, it shows the entire world, you know. Um, but you will see the, the map of the future is different to what, you know, it is now. And that's because a lot of um, places do go underwater. So, um, I don't know specifically in terms of New York and Mississippi going under the water, but yes, um, what do you recommend? I mean, it's common sense, isn't it, really? If you know that it's going under water, I would suggest you try to relocate. This is what a lot of ancient tribes and cultures did when they knew that something was going to take place that meant they had to move, they would move and relocate. Even down to, um, now they're trying to create fake suns, right? For those who know about this. Um, but when you really think about it, what is what the sun is, hydrogen and helium burning constantly. It's a ball of gas and it can burn out. So if you look at the sun, the planets around it forming the solar system rely on the gravitational pull of the sun. So if that sun suddenly blew up or disappeared, then people living on those planets, such as ourselves on this planet Earth, will have to relocate. And, you know, so this has happened in different star systems. And that's how these extraterrestrials had to vacate and go somewhere else. And this is why it's important as a species, 
And this is also tying into the work of Terence Howard that we have to evolve so that we can travel interstellar, right? And this is what his linchpin and the technologies that he has actually, you know, created from, you know, his discoveries or the industries and the information that was passed to him is helping us to do, to be able to, if we think about that, you know, travel to other planets, travel to other galaxies and perhaps to other universes, you know. So it, it, it's important for the whole of humanity to pay attention because... We are all earthlings in that sense, if we all live on the planet Earth. So it's in our interest to figure out ways of protecting the planet. And if something did happen to the planet, what would we do? You know, for us, Panda Babianun, Dr. Malachi G. York, is saying and is able to say that, you know, those who are ready, those who make it, it can take them away and they can go back to where they come from, which is back to the the original planet, which is Sirius or Orion. Some people might be from Mars. Um, so, yeah, it's very important to learn that we can um, evolve to that level so that if anything happens to the planet, we can still survive. Okay, um, yeah, and if you read the Black Book, part one, it talks about this, about how beings had to relocate and find other homes when, you know, their sun, um, they had their ozone layer was was depleting, um, which goes into a big story where there was a war on, you know, they were warring the, the different extraterrestrials and um, they destroyed their ozone layer and it was going to basically get destroyed. So they had to vacate and leave and come here. Um, but I can go into more details on that another time. Um, I am grateful for these questions being answered. I have so many, like most, being answered. I ask, I receive. Thank you. Yeah, thank for the um, for your kind words. Um, we are grateful too for the questions because without your questions, we can't give you the information or outformation. And that's such an important point because um, our what we share with you is based on your questions. So if you don't know, you have to ask. If you don't ask, you're not going to know. And sometimes the question, excuse me. The questions raise the level and the vibration and where we are elevating to. So some, some questions, you will get more information if you're reading. Um, you have to study because this is something that keeps coming up when I say to people, you have to read and we've got over a thousand books and some people are like, you know, young people, their attention span is quite short nowadays due to social media and constant scrolling. 30 seconds, one minute videos, um, they don't particularly like to read. Um, but if you look, really look, and adults too, um, a lot of people say, you know, they, they just want to listen or hear a video. And whilst that is good, um, you have to do the basics. And in school, the first thing they tell you is to learn or at least come out with English and maths, even though they use it to prepare you to be a slave and work you know, in the many industries that you just work and they don't really teach you about freedom or financial literacy to the point where you don't need to rely on, you know, someone else to provide your, your life, your livelihood. So you have to learn to read and write. Those are kind of basic. Everything's based on maths, which is why I also like when Terence went back to the basics and was like one times one. People say one. Yes, if it occurs one time, as he explains, it is one. But if you're talking about putting the, um, you know, the, the multiplication or the, you know, the um, times sign, then it becomes a different thing because you're multiplying, which means to increase. And there has to be an equal balance between two states, the duality that I'm constantly going on about. So you're in the middle. You can lean either way, positive, negative, good, bad, agreeable, disagreeable. So expansion, contraction, breathing in, breathing out. This is all part of nature. Even the straight lines. Yes, there are straight lines, but they're also curved lines. The, the two sides go together. So um, it's important. Yeah? So it's good to learn to read and write basic maths and English. All right, um, Saken, hi, thanks for the teachings. 
Can you explain about Adam's calendar? Is it a communication portal between Earth and Mars? I have learned that the vortex opens on the 23rd of September. I also learned that this is the African New Year. How true is this? That's a lot. Um, Adam's calendar. Well, if they say in the religious world that Adam was the first man, which we know to be different, then if you watch how time is governed and the calendar that we follow. So today, most people are following a Gregorian calendar, right? Um, which started off with what? 1 AD. But before the Gregorian calendar, they go into BC or BCE or the, you know, before the Christian era. And, um, but that's dealing with the birth of Jesus. So if Jesus wasn't the first person and Adam was, then you should really be using Adam's calendar and that will be more accurate um, in terms of using, being trapped in that religious world. So that's why um, Adam's calendar is, is used to calculate from day one when Adam was born. And that only goes back, what, 6,000 years. And so, you know, people think we're in the year 2000 now because of starting from 1 AD, coming forward with the Gregorian calendar. So that's what um, Adam's calendar is about. And sometimes people, when they, they're, they're trying to work out things like, when did this occur? When did Jesus go to Egypt, you know, um, and why did he just pop back up at the age of 13? And he was, you know, arguing with the Pharisees and the Sanhedrins in, you know, um, in the temples, um, so, in the synagogues, yeah. So they tried to work out what, what happened to those missing years when he was in Egypt, from he was born, the next minute he was in Egypt, and then, so... The most accurate calendar that would make sense is to use Adam's calendar. So people are confused where they don't know certain like dates when things occurred. Um, is it a communication portal between Earth and Mars? No, um, I don't. I don't know how Adam's calendar is a communication portal between. Or is is that another question? It's not very clear. I've learned that the, the vortex opens every. Um, every 10 years um, and the last one was 2000 what are we 24 2023 um, so it, it kind of goes back to the Philadelphia experiment where they kind of affected time um, so you have different cycles so from 2003 every 10 years the vortex started to open so it would have been 2003 2013 you know, and every 10 years. So that's, um, it, it opened last year. Um, so uh, I learned that the vortex opens on the 23rd of September and it opens for a period and then it closes. I also learned that this is the African New Year. Um, how true is this? Yes, in the sense of, I explained, June 26th, it's our new year. Um, as the original African people or Nuwapians is a much better term to use. Um, but yes, this is our new year. We're celebrating it, June 26th. And if we all channel and put that energy out to get the master teacher home, um, it's all about mental unification. It's all about mental projection. It's all about us visualizing, chanting, connecting with our ancestors, supporting the legal fights the many legal avenues that we're utilizing to, um, to get him, you know, released from the incarceration. Um, so yeah, we'll be celebrating that on the 26th of June. What are the spiritual practices of Wu Sabat? Authors, main spiritual books. Um, Wu Sabat is a culture and yes, it handles and deals with spirituality and so you know, like, people have been teaching misinformation or wrong information for many years, and Wu Sabat covers everything. No one really can stand against Wu Sabat. Um, the best they will do is try to attack you personally, but no matter what they do by attacking you, 
they can't deal with Wu Sabat. So when you're dealing with Wu Sabat and the spiritual practices, it's real. It's about you connecting with your ancestors. We've got many scrolls that deal with spirituality. The, you know, 30 spirits, the spiritual you, um, after the physical you dies. These are just some that I'm just like kind of reeling off my, my the top of my head. There are so many scrolls, as, as we keep saying, the, the master teacher has written, you can say as far as a thousand books, um, covering every subject you can think of, you know, above and under the sun. So, um, yes, we do have altars where we speak to our ancestors, we communicate, shall I say, and we, you know, we do many, many rituals. Um, no rituals involving any sacrifices in terms of animals spilling blood or doing any harm to anyone. That's not our way. Our way is peaceful. It's about learning how to communicate with your ancestors who will help you. Um, there was a previous question where somebody was saying that, why no help? And you don't get any help because you're, you're ringing the wrong telephone number, as I've said previously. By connecting to the right energy, the right source, you would receive that help that you, that you need. Um, so yes, we do have, um, you know, altars and spiritual books. We have all the, the scriptures, um, in the original, you know, the best form you can ever get them that deal with fasting, meditating, relaxation, um, how you eat, everything to do with your well-being, whether it's physical, spiritual, mental, etc. Um, can you tell us about people that speak in tongues? Some Christians do it and some star seeds also. Can they understand what they are saying when speaking in tongues? Where did speaking in tongues originate from? Right, again, we've covered this question before and appropriately, I've actually got a part of Tarak here called Speaking of Tongues. Um, let just make you look, see that. Speaking of tongues and what is God's language? Because, um, again, this is something that we've covered as in it's actually dealing with possession of, you know, um, disembodied spirit beings and trying to utilise your physical body and fusing with you. And, you know, this kind of comes from mainly the Pentecostal church. It goes back to the, you know, when they're talking about in the Bible, the day of the Pentecost, where, um, you know, the, the um, disciples were speaking in tongues. But when you research what it was saying, the real breakdown behind that, the word tongue is dealing with lasan or dealing with language or being able to speak in other languages where people can understand. So like they were given the gift of being able to speak in many languages, such as Greek, you know, Latin, different languages. That's what it's talking about, not what people are calling speaking in tongues today, which is actually known as gibberish. Okay, this is where you're maybe you know, possessed by a demonic entity or an entity that wants to utilize your physical body and they fuse with you. You start foaming in the mouth, you start going into convulsions and, you know, you're speaking words you don't even know how to, um, to kind of interpret or understand. And then sometimes you have to go to somebody and then you go to the minister, imam or preacher or pastor and he will say to you, oh, that means this or that means this. But if it's a message and it's a communication between you and God or this entity, why not make it so clear so that you can you can um, you can speak it? And people will claim all kinds of things, but um, that's not where that speaking in tongues, as far as the scripture goes, that's not what it's talking about. They're speaking gibberish. And if you want to learn more about this subject, there is a book called Speaking in Tongues that we have, um, what is speaking in tongues, um, what is God's language, speaking of tongues, that goes into that in great detail. But it's not, um, yeah, it's not a healthy thing. Question, manifestation is possible, so how can you focus manifestation on what you really desire? As in, how can you vibrate to the frequency? You do that through your mind mentally um, and through your intentions 
we cover that in our book, um, Fast Track, Your Spiritual and Conscious Journey. Um, it all ties into the, the other things we, talk, we, we spoke about in terms of spirituality. So um, in order to manifest something, you have to have concentration on a specific goal, on a specific um, endeavor that you want to achieve, but your intentions have to be right. And then you, you, will, you could meditate in terms of so that you can receive out formation and connect to the mental reservoir that I mentioned before because all the Akashic records where aren't all the answers to everything are. And with the right uh, mentality, with the right intentions, with the right kind of focus, you can receive out formation. Um, it could be through your ancestors that people use the word inspire you or they put it into you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how you can manifest things. And I mentioned before that it's got to be not based on selfishness as well, right? It's got to be based on something that will be purposeful, useful, that can help humanity, help yourself. Um, and, and you have to be very clear and specific as to what you want. Um, so for example, if somebody might want a partner and they'll just say, I want a partner, but they don't specify exactly like what type of partner they want, you know, really go into detail, like how tall, how, you know, what complexion, what credentials, like if you don't make it specific, then when you get something that doesn't match what you want, then you're going to be like, well, I didn't say that. But then you didn't actually specify exactly what you want. It's like saying, I want a car. Okay. Model. What's the engine size? What's the color? What's, what all the attributes that go with the car? Is it automatic? Is it a manual? Is it how many doors? You know, be very specific in terms of what you would like to manifest and concentrate on it, meditate on it, and then put the steps to get in it. It's not just, I'm going to manifest it by just thinking of it. It doesn't work that way. You still have to put energy behind it in terms of the steps you go about to achieving it. Okay. Um, it says, very hard to get your materials in the US. Can you partner with Amazon or Abbey Book? I find that surprising because our main um, center at the moment is in the US, is in New York, in Brooklyn. You can go to Bushwick Avenue, go to 71717 um, at Brook, um, Bushwick Avenue. We have a store there, you can get it, or you can order online. Um, I don't know which part of the US you are in, but look on our website, unitedsabiansworldwide.com, go to contact, go to bookstores, and find out which is the nearest bookstore to you. We also ship out worldwide from here, so you can go to nashat, N-A-S-H-A-T dot co UK and order online um, and we will ship it out to you. But um, yeah, you can get the materials in the US, all right? Love your channel, keep up the great works. Thank you, thank you. Keep supporting us, subscribe, ask questions, like questions and we will keep going. Um, yeah, thank you. Who was in the land of Nod when Cain was cast out to wonder? Also, how was there more people on the earth when Adam and Eve had two sons, one of which was slaughtered by the aforementioned brother Cain? Exactly. This is what we try to teach people with right knowledge, right wisdom and the right understanding. And with Wu Sabat, we, we explain that the world didn't start with just Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, um, which is what they tried to allude to in the Bible, because as you've rightly pointed out, if Cain killed Abel and there were only three people left on the planet, Adam, Eve and, and Cain, then um, why was he afraid that people were going to kill him? Because when he was banished um, and sent out to the land of Nod, as you've pointed out in your question, he was afraid that people were going to kill him. Um, we explain that um, Genesis and, Ad and that whole Adam and Eve story is not the beginning of the first time. It's the beginning of a new recreation or 
um, like I said, bara or to recreate something, right? There were other people on the planet way before that story. And some of these were in the land of Nod were the 200 fallen angels. There were Nephilims and beings that came down to this planet um, and, you know, they were living and doing all kinds of crazy things in the land of Nod. Um, Enki, you know, he set up many places and so, yeah, so um, that's, that's why they had to put a mark on him. And the mark was to protect him or for people to, to like, leave him alone, basically, um, as, as the story goes. Um, so, what did he say? The, yeah, so there were already people on the planet Earth. Um, there were many, many people on the planet Earth. The planet has been here for billions of years, you know. So, um, yeah, so that you answer the question. So there were the beings that were, the, um, there were some Hindu beings that were there. Um, many different types of beings used to come to this planet for, for many things, for recreation, to wreck creation. We say recreation or recreation, but some were coming here to hunt. Some were coming here on vacation. Many, many beings have been visiting this planet. Some made their residence here um, in, the, in the caverns of the planet, in the waters, deep, deep down in the seas of the waters, in the sky, um, you know, in you know, the Lurigian points, which I think Terence also mentioned, the, the, the Lagrange points, if I'm pronouncing that properly that they can camouflage themselves, they use the clouds to, to hide, um, they, they vibrate on different frequencies where you can't see them, and then they sometimes, you know, lower the vibration or take off that um, the camouflage and some people see them for a minute, for a second, and, you know, they disappear because they just go into the different dimensions or realms. Um, okay, I think we're coming to the end. I'll try and do as many more as I can. Uh, appreciate the continuous work you guys do. Is there any books or info you guys have heard about HARP? Yeah, um, HARP is actually, you spell it H-A-R-P, it's H-A-A. -A. Um, yeah, HARP deals with, deals with the frequency they've been doing. It's an experiment. It's out there in, um, I think it's Alaska. Um, yeah, just Google the HARP project. They, they've been using that to modify and um, deal with weather experiments for, for a very long time. Um, so the question was, the books, um, have you heard of? The, yeah, the master teacher, Pana Babi Anun, again, was the first person. We keep saying this because the books he was putting out in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, to the year 2000 and till today, to the year 2024. Um, a lot of people are now talking that information. And he was saying that back then that, you know, there's gonna come a time where people are gonna be speaking this, but they won't remember or know that it came from him. And he said, it doesn't matter because the main thing is, the objective is to get the information out to the people. So when we say he's spoken about everything we come across, you know, he's already put books out um, and you can seek out the books. You know, some of the books like the Holy Tablets, um, you know, the year 2000, what to expect, the Luciferian Conspiracy, Leviathan books, one, two, three, and four, the Black Book. Um, there are so many classic books, Man from Planet Risk, um, Ilion and Risk. There are many, many, many scrolls. He's covered pretty much every subject you can think of. Um, and there's still more information or outformation that he's sharing with us. And it's important to know that it, this is important. We don't know everything. I don't know everything. I'm a student teacher and all we do is share the information. And he said to us, if you read one of his books, that one book alone, you can have so much information and you should share that. And this is referred to as each one teach one, because sometimes people ask certain questions that, you know, it's, it's like we are student teachers, we're learning just like you. We've accumulated a lot of information and we study um, as, as much of it as we can, but he's the man with the answers and he's the one that shares it with us and we share it with other people. So don't, you know, um, anything that um, you read and learn, share it with other people. 
uh, thank you, student teacher, for your wisdom and knowledge. Uh, thank the master teacher. Thank you. What do you know about tarot cards, readings, magic, voodoo, the occult, and manifesting? Are we supposed to embrace these things to tap into our powers, or are they truly forbidden? Again, this is what I'm saying about asking a straight, easy question. Not easy question, but make the question easy in terms of directness. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't get involved with, uh, we're not really, most people don't know what they're doing with tarot cards, um, readings and things like that. We, we've been advised not to really tamper and get, because you can open up, you know, you can open up your centers, you can do certain things. Magic goes back to um, Magas, as I've explained before, um, especially if you're dealing with Merlin, the magician. This is what Hollywood is about. I think I answered a previous question about using the Hollywood and they use that to cast spells. Um, so they get a cast, they write a script, they get people to, you know, pretend to fake certain emotions like crying. Um, so they can get to your soul, get to your emotions. Um, voodoo, again, it depends what you're calling magic as well, because there's black magic and there's white magic. Um, and it's, it's also dealing with chemistry or the art of transformation of base metals or base elements. Um, when you said the occult, well, you've got to be more specific because you have the occult that deals with Wicca, which, you know, people like Hitler were tied into through Madame Blavatsky uh, of the Thule Society. Um, that's the occult manifestation we just covered. There's manifestation in positivity and there's manifestation in terms of negative things. So, yeah, be a bit more specific with your question. Um, some things are forbidden in terms of, well, nothing is forbidden. We, we learn that you're going to be responsible if you do things that have a negative effect on you, um, like, you know, if you were basically doing, playing around with Luigi boards and open up portals and spirits and they possess you or they're attached to you now and your life is a mess because you did that. Um, so you choose to or not to do something. And if you don't know what you're doing, then don't tamper with it and wait to be instructed or to be taught. Um, of the best way of, of, of how to utilise these things, all right? Um, what have we got left? Peace, my brothers. May I get the information for your site where I can order some of those books in the U I'm in the US? Um, I'll give it again. United Sabians Worldwide.com. Yeah, search that in Google. Go to the site and you can access the products. Um, I live in Brooklyn, New York. Does Wusabat have a location I can go to in person? How can I find it? I literally just said that. Go to 717 Bushwick Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and yeah, go, go and visit. Go and speak to the brothers and sisters. And um, yeah, ask them anything and get some scrolls. Always good content, man. Just wondering, how do you increase positive attraction in, attractions into your life versus negative attractions? Yeah, um, again, it all comes down to you. You're the center of your universe. And it starts off with you being in control, being in terms of your, your mind, yeah, your mind. We have a school called the mind. It teaches you how to deal with any situation um, positively or negatively but more importantly you should be balanced um, and so to attract positivity you've got to vibrate and have a positive vibration your thoughts have to be pure and positive um, help people deal with humanity love in terms of divine love I should care about people um, and you know you will attract um, what you put out so increase positive attractions into your life versus negative attractions. If you hang around with the wrong people and do the wrong things, that energy is going to, you know, affect you. Um, that's why they say birds of a feather flock together. Um, so try your best to be around people that are successful, 
positive, they're thinking about elevation, eating correctly, you know, meditating, trying to do positive things. This is what Wu Sabat is about. Um, and the last question for today, it says, um, Rahuba, can you enlighten brothers and sisters how to structure their questions? Wadu. Yes, so I've kind of said that and that's, I think, a good place to leave it today. Really like, think about your question. Um, you may have to rephrase it a couple of times because like, if I'm going to ask a question, I ask it and then I think, and if you think about it, you might get the answer and then you'll be like, okay, that's not really what I wanted to ask. So you kind of rephrase it until you get to a point where your question is very straight and direct on what you really want to know. Try not to ramble on, try not to just, like I said before, you're, you're asking a question but you're commenting on it at the same time or sometimes you're trying to answer it yourself, which kind of defeats the object because if you know the answer, then you wouldn't be asking the question. So make your question very specific. And um, yeah, just to leave, as I said, like, when you step up and put your face towards Sabat and, you know, be on social media, you know, like, you have to be prepared for negative and positive because you will get, you will get attacked. You will get all kinds of things coming at you. How do I know this? Because if you look at all the people that step up to deal with positivity, to deal with truth, even down to Terence Howard um, recently, or even people like Andrew Tate, um, Terence Howard coming with this new information, like debunking old information, the first thing was to ridicule him um, in the past, whether it was Markham X, Martin Luther King, Noble Drew Ali, and our master teacher, what did they do? They ridicule, oh, yo, you're talking about extraterrestrials, you must be crazy. They trump up charges, um, they will slander you, and if, if possible, imprison you. Or if, You know, Andrew Tate, he went through this, and what Andrew Tate was teaching in terms of motivation, motivating young men to take responsibility, to be able to be like, I'm going to be successful, I'm going to train, I'm going to work. And, you know, that's a good message for young men. Um, obviously, you can't go to the extremes because, you know, there's, a lot of people started saying he's a misogynist and this kind of thing. But um, ultimately, you know, the powers that be that are pushing wrong information, they will be afraid of all about they will be afraid of right knowledge. And all they can do is attack you personally. Um, the thing is, every person who goes out to teach already kind of knows the trajectory in terms of you're going to go up against some negative forces. You're going to go up against people who want to shut all about down, that want to discredit you, that want to make you look like you're the crazy one. But in reality, the truth always prevails and the master teacher will be released. Andrew Tate, you know, he went through his thing. Obviously, um, I'm not like here to push or promote anybody. I'm just talking in general terms. And so you have to know that, you know, this, this comes, the territory is going to come with positive and negative. But the thing is, even if they go as far as taking your life, like some of the leaders in the past um, who were here for humanity, who were teaching, Martin Luther King was teaching about let's all come together, love and unity. Um, Malcolm X, on the other hand, was a little bit more radical. And he was teaching, you know, we need to take, you know, we need to solve this problem of, you know, injustice and stuff like that. Um, both of them, one was radical, one was a bit more passive, but they both still got assassinated. Um, so what I'm basically saying is, you kind of know that from the get-go, what comes, the territory that comes with it. And even when your life is taken, you just, you've raised, you've done so much good work in terms of, for humanity that you're still going to exist on the other side and still helping you know so um yeah when you when you step up to teach and change the status quo or bring about right knowledge right wisdom um you know get rid of the lies etc etc you're going to get attacked you know you will be attacked so um just answering and leaving that question to say like think about the question think about the answers because this is ultimately about Good and evil, Armageddon, Jihad, which is the war between good and bad or negative and positive. And that don't mean that you should be going you know, to war because we don't deal with violence and trying to harm anybody. It's all about truth and that's it. Like 
share the truth with everyone and the truth has been suppressed for so long and now Wusabat is here. If you want to learn more, subscribe to OSM Vision, ask your questions, like them so that the next episode we get your question answered, okay? So I want to thank everyone uh, for your questions and until next week, peace, love and unity. Wadu.